Hello, Amazon friends. The number one issue people have is that they are not able to validate their product. So today, I'm going to be making a video right now, obviously, with the six steps of how to actually validate your product. These are the product validation guidelines. And we're actually going to take a random product and we're going to walk uh, it through all of them just because I feel like that gives a lot of clarity as opposed to just kind of guessing because just looking at a screenshot and going by the revenue, the price and the reviews isn't enough. And just because a product has good reviews or low reviews, should I say, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to sell. By the way, my name is Karina. If you're first time on this channel, do hit the like button because you're going to find this video very helpful. So hit it right now and subscribe. Okay, so let's get to it. So here are the six factors. I'm going to present them to you um, right now so you can see them. And then I'm going to go into great detail about these. Um, I wouldn't say great, great detail. If you are a student of mine in my Into a Millie program, or if you're a member of the private label club, which you can try for $7 and you'll know how to do all of this. Um, I do have separate videos for all of these and I go into a lot of detail. So you will be able to kind of get the very, very in-depth detail. This is just the bird's eye view, just so you have an idea. So, so you don't kind of, so you can validate your product by yourself um, and check it to make sure there's no obvious red flags. Let's go through all of these. I'm going to be going with this weight belt. This is honestly the first thing that pops into my head, which is exactly why I'm doing it because it's going to be perfect for our kind of breakdown, right? So a lot of the times what people do, and this is very wrong, is that they do this um, drop down menu thing and they just look at um, the numbers and they just check for revenue, reviews and price. A lot of the times they don't really take it seriously. If you're in any of my programs, you know kind of the ballpark range of what to look for. But just because it has low reviews, it doesn't really mean anything. We want to look at a lot of other factors, right? This alone is not going to tell us if it's a good product or not. Right now, there seems to be a glitch um, in the system, but it's not a big deal because we're not going to be looking at this too much right now, right? So um, what are we going to be looking for? Well, we see this... Um, Word has a search volume of 10,000. However, the first step is to double check that that in fact is the main keyword. If you are doing several different product research methods, you might not know where a kind of a word is coming from. Like maybe you thought of it, maybe you randomly thought of it, maybe you saw it from another seller storefront, things like that. That's not enough to determine where the sales are coming from. So we want to actually check. So how we do that is we go to Helium 10, Helium 10, let me log in today, to log in. Anyway, so we're going to actually use their tool called the Magnet tool. If you haven't signed up for this, Karina 10 gives you 10% off every month and Karina 50 gives you 50% off every month, but essentially, um, it's great for keyword research. It's great for product research, but let's go to the magnet tool and I'm going to type in the word um, weight belt because that's what I think the main keyword is. And then I'm going to sort the words from highest to lowest. And if that's the one that comes up first, then I know that that is the, um, the main keyword. Sometimes a lot of random things come up. Weight belt. All those words you saw pop up, I was doing example products as well um, for products not to launch for my students in the PL club because I do have um, in-depth PDF guides of exactly what's wrong with a product and that um, is quite helpful as well. Okay, so what you want to do is this gives you words. You want to sort it from highest to lowest and it's going to give you a lot of irrelevant things but that are kind of in the same category. You obviously want to kind of ignore them and just check like back support, right? Maybe that could be it. Um, back pain, workout gear, that's not it. Lumbar support, maybe it's a lumbar support. Essentially, weight belt. So here it is. It seems to be the main keyword. Another way to double check is obviously to open this to make sure that that is in fact the product you're looking for. The first word that's kind of the, uh, the most general but describes your product this is the main keyword. So this is good. A lot of people will put something else like... Um, 
sweat belt or like weight belt for lifting, right? And they think that's the main keyword, but it only has 5,000 searches. That's why it's important to check this. So that's good. So that's check. Then we look for fair market in revenue. And that's what I mentioned earlier. Um, it seems to have loaded a little bit more, but essentially we want to make sure that the revenue is stable and that not one seller is completely dominating the entire market. So sometimes that happens where let's say this person is selling 244,000 while everyone else is doing 5,000 or 3,000, which means all that search volume of 10,000 people are for some reason buying for from that one seller, whatever the reason may be. It could be that he has Oh, it could be that he has a presence outside of Amazon or maybe kind of the keyword is the brand name. A lot of the times, for example, the word Band-Aid is actually the brand name, but people know it as the actual product. Same with Q-tip. Q-tip is a cotton swab, but everyone calls it Q-tip because of the brand. And sometimes brands dominate like that. You don't want a product that does that, right? So check for stability that everyone is getting an even uh, revenue share or relatively even. Then reasonable reviews. And the reason I say reasonable is because a lot of uh, sellers try to go for reviews that are actually on both opposite ends. They try to go for reviews that are under 75, which is pretty much impossible to find. And then on the other spectrum, I've seen people kind of see reviews that are in the thousands and try to launch a product, that's obviously not gonna work. You want a few sellers to kind of, you know, maybe they have high reviews, maybe some have low, but you want to basically find gaps where you can put your product in and still do well. Profitable price, of course, is a given. You wanna make sure that you're, uh, you're profitable in comparison to the FBA fees and to your actual cost of goods. And some products are actually not. Sometimes um, that people are actually losing money selling a product because of the FBA fees. And there's many reasons why that could happen. <clears throat> Sometimes it's an Amazon dominated market, so obviously they don't pay the fees. Sometimes it's like a supplier or it's being drop shipped, so the fees again are not really there, you know, or they have the low manufacturing costs, so they can avoid um, the profits, they can have more profits, but I, you wanna make sure that you can compete fairly. Then we look at the BSR trend, and this one's my favorite. This actually shows seasonality. Um, as well as how good the product is selling throughout the year. So if we click on any one of these, Helium 10 will actually pop this up and we can see their BSR. And BSR is the best seller rank. It's kind of a, in, an inverse relationship. So the lower it is, the better it is. So Helium 10 loads it. Um, so you want it to be low. If it's low, if it's really low, especially like beyond uh, lower than 1,000, even lower than 5,000, the items are selling exceptionally, exceptionally well. If it's a very high, let's say like 50,000 and above, again, it's all relative to the products and the categories, then that's very alarming and that means the product is not selling well. But basically, the lower it is, the better the product is going to be selling and that's what you want, but you wanna compare them to the other sellers too. And then, for some reason, it's not loading, but essentially what you would have seen is a chart and there would be a um, pink line here. And the pink line, you can hover over it and it will tell you the number. And that's the BSR, which is the best seller rank of the product. It's very helpful to just kind of go and see how well the product has been selling throughout the year. If it has any, for example, if it's seasonal, you'll see a really low BSR. Let's say it's a swimming pool during the summer, but then once it gets towards let's say winter time or something like that, then the BSR will spike and no one's really buying the product so much. And then the last thing is the age of the listings. And this is for several reasons, okay? The first one is if all the sellers are on um, kind of Amazon for a long time, like three years, four years, five years, then it's going to be very difficult for you to penetrate and to compete with those sellers because they just have all that history with Amazon. However, if all of the listings are also very new, let's say a few weeks, that's also going to be impossible for you to compete with because that means it's a market that has a high turnover. So essentially people are doing these crazy giveaways and they continue to boot people off of the first page. And if you try to launch, maybe you'll get to page one, but then you can be booted off by another seller that's doing giveaways. So you wanna make sure that there is some people that have been around for a while, some people that are a few months old, maybe a, a few people, a, a kind of a few weeks old, but you just wanna make sure that there is 
kind of like a diversity and that it's not a market that's been around and completely dominated and this also reflects on the reviews because you'll notice markets that are quite um, old will have a lot more reviews and then obviously you also cannot compete with that and then helium 10 will also give you um, the age of the listing on this little thing that's not loading but you can just scroll back and see how long um, that they have been around for so that's essentially uh, what to look for in a nutshell now I like I mentioned I go into tremendous detail on all of these and unique product research methods and product validation skills there's a lot a lot more that goes into this because this video is about 10 minutes long and it's just simply not enough to describe it. So if you do want to be part of our kind of family on the PL Club, go to theplclub.com and join us for $7. Or of course, I do have the full Amazon program into amelie.com. Hope you already liked the video and subscribed. It was great talking to you. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.